All right, everyone, welcome to another review. And in today's review, we're going to be taking a look at Zamana Anti Malware. And of course, we're going to be doing the configuration and installation of Zamana first, and then moving on to the other tests. However, I first want to mention though, I'm going to get to all your comments. I know I've been getting really behind on them lately. I mean, I have about 50 or so comments, I think, to answer, so I will answer all the comments. All right, Zamana Anti Malware. What is Zamana? Well, Zamana was designed to be a removal tool only. So that means it doesn't have a real-time protection. That also means that we're not going to be doing a prevention test with Zamana. We're only going to be doing the configuration and the removal test. So what kind of offerings does Zamana have? Well, Zamana is a cloud-based scanner. So that means there are no signatures on your computer. Now, of course, you know I'm uh, how I feel about cloud scanners. I like them and I hate them at the same time. They're great because you have the most up-to-date signatures out there. They're all in the cloud and the program accesses them and they're all up-to-date. So it's great. But if you don't have internet, you have no protection whatsoever. Meaning you plug in a flash drive or you run a piece of malware, there's no way to cro cross-reference that with um, a database. So it's kind of a love them and hate them type of thing. But this is also designed to be a secondary scanner, meaning that you should have a different anti-malware solution running in the background at all times to be your primary line of defense. Something such as Avast, um, uh, Norton, Komodo, Bitdefender, something like that. All right, so that's basically what it is. It's supposed to just be a simple scanner and that is it. Uh, they do have, a, you do have to pay for this. They do give you a trial download, which we're going to go ahead and set up right away. But essentially, you do have to pay for it. Uh, it costs $19.95 for one user for one year. Obviously, if you want to increase your years, that's going to increase the price, as well as users, it will also increase the price. But it's nice they offer a bunch of different uh, options for that specific program. All right, so let's start and get into the installation portion. We're gonna go ahead and click the download button right here. We'll then be prompted right here to download it. For the sake of the test, I'm going to save it to the desktop so that we can do a little bit more of analysis on it. And before we do that, let me go ahead and get my criteria open here so that I don't miss anything in the way of testing. Make sure I keep this as universal as possible. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is now we're gonna take a look at the size of the file here. So let's right click on that and see what it is. 4.67 meg. That's not bad at all. That's actually really good uh, as long as it doesn't download anything, which this does look like an actual installer, not a downloader. So let's go ahead and run this. We're going to run it as you normally would. And let's do that. So then we're going to basically select our language. We're going to click OK. And once you've done that, you'll be presented with the installation screen here. So, all we're going to do is we're going to start by clicking Next, read through the license agreement. I accept the license agreement in order to install it. Select your location. We're going to keep it at default. And I'm going to go ahead and create a desktop icon. So, it looked like it installed, and I assume it's launching right now, and it is. And that little yellow bar that you saw right there was just basically connecting to the cloud which it did successfully due to the fact that it went away. And you can see we have a 15 day trial remaining. Now the cool thing is with the trial here is they actually do allow you to remove malware and clean up your system, uh, even with the free version. So that's really nice right there. So you can actually use this as a cleanup tool if you want on an already infected system. Let's take a look at through the interface here. Um, but before we do that, let's go ahead and take a look at what it is using in the background here. Um, let's just take a peek at that quick here. All right, um, Zamana, Zamana. Let's see if I can recognize these processes here. All right, so it looks like we have two processes um, with Zamana anti-malware, and they aren't really using that much in the way of uh, memory at, at all. So it's nice to see. It's a very light program on the system, which it should be considering it doesn't even have a real-time scanner. This is just an on-demand scanner. So if you want to look at it that way, it might be a little bit on the high side just for being an on-demand scanner. But the GUI is open, so let's go ahead and close that and then see what it's using if it went down any bit. So it looks like, no, it is still using the same amount. So 
not exactly the lowest, the lightest in the system, I should say, but not horrible. I mean, with computers nowadays, they can handle this easily. All right, um, another thing is I don't understand why it needs to run in the background 24-7 uh, due to the fact that it is just an on-demand scanner, and you can see it's starting a scan right now. It's set to do that every time the system starts. We'll get into that a little bit later. Okay, so you saw what it's using. You saw the installation file. What do I think about the interface? Well, personally, I like the interface. I think it's very, very simple, easy to understand, and everything you pretty much need is going to be right in front of you. No update button because it's a cloud-based scanner. Your scan button is right here. You can select either Smart Scan or Deep Scan, and then click the Scan button and get right on with what you need to do. Awesome. I love it. And they do have this little drag and drop window right here. I find that to be useless. I'm more of a context menu type person. I just like to right click and uh, click scan with that instead of having to open the interface, drag and drop, and that kind of crap. So I don't like these little things. I think they're a waste of space personally, but I guess some people like them. All right, so let's take a look at the settings here. Not much in the way of settings. Uh, we go in general here, we can disable notification areas in the system tray, select all language, scan, set scheduled scans right here, create a restore point. Now, I'm kind of up and down with this restore point because if you create a restore point and you're in, you have a system that's infected, well, it's nice in the case of if it's a false positive, but if it's an actual infection, now you've created a checkpoint of your system of basically when it was infected. And if you restore it back to that point, you're gonna be back to that infected state. So that's something I really don't, I'm kind of up and down about. I mean, it's nice for false positives, but for infections, it can kind of hurt you. All right, so uh, the only setting I'm gonna change right now on this screen is I'm going to start when, I'm gonna change the scheduled scan, and I'm gonna say once a week, just because I feel that every time the system starts, it's a little excessive. I really don't think that it's absolutely necessary. If you're gonna run just this program in your system and this program alone, I definitely keep it that way due to the fact that every time you browse the internet, you're at that risk of having an infection and you're gonna really need to scan your system every time just because there is no real-time protection in here. So with that said, I would not recommend running this alone. All right, so we're gonna say Saturday at seven o'clock in the morning. Why not, right? All right, so that's adjusted right there. Um, exclusions, nothing really to talk about there. Check for updates, pretty self-explanatory, and then advance. Uh, they get this nice warning here saying that you're about to proceed to some advanced options and they're trying to scare you away. Click that and there's only one option, auto launch, which to me is useless. I don't even know why you'd auto launch this thing at startup due to the fact that it is just an on-demand scanner. I've already gone through that. So uh, basically what I would do is I would say uncheck that and not launch the program at startup because there really is no need. Let your other antivirus do its work and then use this one as a secondary opinion, kind of like Malwarebytes or Hitman Pro or Norton Power Race or something like that. Uh, if we go over here to the uh, little biological biohazard symbol, if you want to call it that, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, you can see that we do have, oh, that's actually radiation, sorry. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah, so the little radiation symbol, I think that's what that is at least. Anyways, this is our quarantine, nevertheless. And you can see we have nothing in our quarantine. You click the little key that's uh, so you can put in your license key or you can buy a license key off the internet going to their website, just like we saw earlier. We have statistics then right over here, reports they call it. Basically this is where anything would show up that's blocked, um, what, what day it was blocked, type of infection, uh, whether it's been cleaned or not would show up in that window. Version numbers are right down here. If we click on that, I uh, don't even know what happens. It's just bringing us. Okay, so it basically gives, brings you to a change log where you then can read through all the changes that have been done to the program. Obviously, you got your website right here and send feedback right down there. And that is pretty much it. Home button obviously brings you back home. So that is a configuration and walkthrough of Zamana Anti Malware. Nothing really exciting. So with that said, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to move on to the next video and see you in the removal test. And we're going to actually see how well Zamana is at removing malware. Never heard of this. It's a brand new product. I should say a brand new product, but it's a newer company out there. It's one of the newer uh, anti-malware companies. So really eager to see how well it can do. So I'll be back or I won't be back, but I'll see you guys in the next video.